Nation and NFC fans, this next bout is three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of seven wins, six losses, and one draw. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.78 kilograms. Representing MMA Rosenheim and fighting out of Austria. Please welcome Gokhan Abinader Akso. <laughs> and his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and three losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.14 kilograms. Representing Planet Eater and fighting out of Germany. Put your hands together for Christian, the Walking Dead, Ma! <laughs> your referee is Jan Vabornik. Big thanks to our sponsor, PNZ Brave Nation. You've got Gokhan Abinator Aksu in black loose fit fight shorts with a blue accent. Christian the Walking Dead Mach in black shorts with a red accent. Like we say, fantastic fight in prospect here, Kirk. This is one I was very much looking forward to. Why did he call Christian Mach the Walking Dead? Because he cannot be phased. He runs through punches. Never been stopped by way of KO or TKO. But Gokhan's looking to change that. Landing big shots and getting out. He's showing that kickboxing background. We've all seen The Walking Dead. What you have to do to stop them is kill their brain. That is absolutely what Abinator is intent upon doing right now. Oh, big shot fire back. These men are meeting toe to toe. Pressure here from Gokhan up against the cage, trying to find those little angles, spaces to throw the big shots. The taller Mach. Trying to use those kicks to keep his opponent at distance. Not particularly successful with it thus far in the fight. Statistically, the weakness of Gokhan seems to be the grappling as he has four losses by way of submission. So perhaps it would be incumbent upon Mac to try and take the fight to the ground as he has three wins via submission. Oh, we take it down! And an Man down, Brave Nation, and it's over! Wow! Gokhan actually becomes the first man to stop Christian Mack by a strikes the walking dead no more. Wow! The underdog takes it here in Dusseldorf. Huge moment for Gokhan Abinator Aksu. Gokhan did not read the script whatsoever. He took it, tore it up, threw it in the bin, and decided tonight is all about Gokhan Aksu. This is mixed martial arts. You can forget the conventional wisdom because anything can happen in the mixed martial arts cage, and it does. I want to see that finish back. Big shot drops him, and then the uppercut and the hook, that puts him out. Again, expert stoppage from our officials here. The two elements that you look for, Brave Nation, in the stoppage are one, the presence of danger, and two, a lack of intelligent defense. We saw both of those elements right here in front of us. Two are exchanging respects, as we characteristically see in the Brave Combat Federation cage. This is a league where fighters can act however you want. If you want to play the fool, you are allowed to. You should be yourself. But what we see time and time again is tremendous sportsmanship. What a finish by on paper, what you would assume was the underdog. But he adds another finish. He keeps his finishing rate at 100%. Now has seven wins by a KO or TKO. Five first round finishes. What a performance from Gokan Aksu. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing left to do but throw it up to Mr. Carlos Kramer for the official decision. All right, Brave Nation and NFC fans, what an unbelievable bout we just had. This ends at one minute and five seconds of the first round. Your winner by knockout, Gokan Abinader Aksu!
Nation and NFC fans, this next bout is three five minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of eight wins and two losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 65.04 kilograms. Representing Gladiator Fight Gym and fighting out of Brazil. Please welcome Jefferson Jerry Oliveira. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This fan is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of six wins and no losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 65.76 kilograms. Representing Henzo Gracie Jiu Jitsu and fighting out of Azerbaijan, give it up for Ali Black Wolf Gunde. Your referee in charge is Philip Newman. Big thanks to our sponsor, Maritime Hotels. Brave Nation, you've got Jerry Oliveira in black and red, loose fit fight shorts, Ali Black Wolf, Guliev in white and red. Guliev the younger by seven years. Oliveira the shorter, but I do believe he has the reach advantage. Look at those long Dalsim style arms trying to rock the one, two straight away. More so on the gloves, but. He's dropping the lead hand when he throws and tries to retract, but it, he's landing with it. Guliev stalking and getting clipped as he moves in. He needs to rely a little bit more on his distance management. Oliveira overreaching a little bit. That back foot's coming up. This is dangerous. If he lands with it, he knocks him out. If he doesn't, he's wide open for a counter kick. Oliveira now the one stalking. The accuracy from Guliev is the difference maker, and uh -oh. he's wobbled him. Wobbled him right away. Shots to the head like that, about five seconds. Your head's clear. It's clear now. Oliveira is wide open for a straight shot right down the middle after he train tracks his own right hand. Potential for a big uppercut from Guliev if he spots it as well. Guliev doing a great job now of just anticipating, throwing feints, changing levels. But it, there's that counter, beautiful work. Now working in the kicks. This is great work from Guliev in the opening round. Oliveira shifting his weight back slightly. Once the weight is more than 50% on the back leg, unless you're in the Karate Kid movie, it's very, very hard to attack. This is not a good posture for him. And there's the inevitable takedown from the Jiu Jitsu black belt. But Guliev working for there's an armbar. Bar. This would be absolutely huge. Scramble up, foot caught. Could work Looking a triangle. For a triangle now. Oh, cheeky little fence grab. Guard pass coming. This is exactly where Oliveira wants to be. Regard and up. Good work from Guliev. Oh, good Wobbled. shot. Big right short hand. Short time now, it's short time, Brave Nation. Big right hand right down the middle. Guliev countering beautifully. All off that lead hand from Oliveira, which was dropping. Oliveira wisely circling. Trying to avoid that right hand. Superman punching. Again, Guliev is landing heavy, heavy shots here. I would like to see some elbows in close distance. Not even the halfway mark, Brave Nation. Intelligent work from Guliev, just stepping off his opponent. And again, the right hand down the middle. Oh, there's that uppercut. There's scope for more of them. Should he wish, follow it up with a hook. Black Wolf appears to fully have his opponent's number at this point. Another big shot like that, and Black Wolf could leave his opponent howling. Oh, and a head kick. Oliveira's done. Oh! Huge shot. If he follows up with some nasty ground and pound. Oh, and another big shot. Shots are landing, Brave Nation. There's four. Guliev trying to work for his sixth finish. Three of his finishes coming in the first round. And again, Oliveira eating huge shots here. Oliver still firing back. I'd like to see some short elbows from Guliev here over the top, a la Muay Thai style. But he's happy to disengage. Brave Nation, getting hit in the head is exhausting. That may sound funny, I'm not trying to be funny. It drains the body of energy, and that's what we're seeing right now from Jerry Oliveira. 
And there's only so much he can take, and he is eating huge shots here. That straight right is money every time for Guliev. Say the uppercuts there, especially now that Oliver is tired. Jerry Oliveira running on heart right now. Heart and a strong neck, naked shot, denied fully. Well, it must be said that all of his finishes have come in the very first round. He's not used to getting dragged into the deep waters. All of his losses have come by decision, so if you're doing the math there, potentially cardio could be an issue. Very wise, Phil, for Black Wolf to let his opponent up, not try and spin to back control. This is where he's having the greatest success. Look at that lever shot. Investing in the body. Look at that lever shot again. Oliveira is running on empty here. Another big right hand. You're shy with the knee. Needs to pull the head down into it. Big elbows from Guliev. That's what you want to see in close quarters fighting. 30 seconds, Brave Nation. 30 seconds left. Can he get the finish right now? It is all Ali Guliev. You can see everything's coming just that little bit more labored from Jerry Oliveira. Ten seconds now. If you're good, oh, big head kick from Guliev. Big way to finish. Oliveira calling him. Oli Jerry Oliveira calling his opponent in. He's either not very smart or very, very game. But what a first round from Ali Guliev. Surely he has to be on course for a finish, Kirik. That was an absolutely clear 10 9 round for Ali Black Wolf Guliev. Some people might even argue it was an 8 to 10. Potentially, a 10 to 8. potentially a 10 8, given the new scoring criteria, and the judges are now recommended to be a, not necessarily be a little bit looser with the scoring of the 10 8, but be a little bit more liberal with it. You were watching some of that great action. Rock'em Sock'em Robots with the fists. That was the greatest moment in the round for Jerry Oliveira. Unfortunately, was not able to capitalize on it. Fight went right back to standing, and the results are what you see right here. Destruction and destroy. You just, you're going to be telling Ali Guliev if you're in the corner, just more of the same measured, controlled, methodical. Take the openings when you see them, and Oliveira needs to get this fight to the ground. Yeah, you're going to tell Jerry Oliveira, try and take it to the clinch. Don't stand and trade on the outside from the clinch. Look for a takedown and then do what's even harder, holding your opponent down. Eventually, it, you start looking for a submission, but it is a long road to there. I'd like to see Guliev just set up with the jab and then as Oliveira's coming in, just uncork an uppercut. Another big shot down the middle. Oliveira has a chin made of granite. You have to give credit to Oliver. He may not be winning the fight, but he is game as a badger. Nice counter hook, though. He's holding those hands a little bit low for my liking. Then lands almost like a pawing straight. Lands again, looking for it. Goliev needs to move the head. Oliver seems revitalized in the second round. Kerry, it's more of a pawing shot coming at an awkward angle as opposed to a straight. A little bit of what they call in Russia casting, a long wide hook. Again, as Phil alluded to earlier, we're seeing a little bit of the Brazilian style of kickboxing, which is in fact based on Dutch, Dutch kickboxing. One of the things that characterizes it is a hand combination inevitably followed up with a kick. Guliev needs to start checking those kicks. He can't just eat them. It would be fair to say Guliev is looking better in the second round than he was in the first. But again, it is dangerous to train track that rear hand. Oh, blind set up on the takedown. Guliev thought about the knee. Guliev choosing to stand off. And again, big head kick. That landed right on the jaw. Guliev smells a finish. Swarming now. He needs the distance, create distance. What is Oliveira There's made seven, of? seven, eight, nine. Oliveira is tougher than a pair of old Levi's. Ali Blackwolf trying to set up a high light real knockout. Guliev must be thinking to himself, what do I need to get this man out of here? 
Working the body on the head. Oh, huge grinding point now from Guliev. Now you wonder, does Oliveira have enough left in the tank that he can show some of that jiu-jitsu? Oliveira needs to control his opponent's head. He has failed to do so thus far. With a head back that far, huge shots can come down. There's real leverage on the punches now. He is eating big shots, hammer fists, and the fatigue is a massive impediment right now to Jerry Oliveira. Big elbow! A little bit of a knee shield in place, but it is not enough to stop the attack of Black Wolf. Pass to side control from Guliev. May look for the mount here. Guliev slowly, methodically trying to work. Guliev landing big, big shots. Trying to hook the leg, almost has that, that quarter guard. Fantastic performance so far offensively from Ali Guliev. And you have to give Oliveira his dues for sticking in this long. And he's eaten some serious shots. Wasn't just sticking in there in the beginning of the round. I thought he was winning it for about the two, first two minutes, but now he clearly is not. As a wise man once said, he was winning it until he wasn't. Indeed, Phil, indeed. Beautiful work, Carrick Janess. Oh, look, okay. look at the trajectory of those shots. This is elbow, bad, Phil, this elbow. is bad. Referee taking a long, hard look We've at this. We've got danger here. Over a minute left for Guliev, and he is turning There it is up. no intelligent defense that I'm oh, seeing, it's over. That is it, Ali Guliev with the seventh win in his professional mixed martial arts career. The sixth by way of finish. What a performance for this young fighter. Boom, 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 big win for Black Wolf, Ali Guliev. I want to see that finish back. Those hellacious hammer fists and elbows cutting through the guard of Oliveira. Azerbaijan in the house. Fantastic night for Azerbaijan. And as always, huge respect from here for Jerry Oliveira. Showed all the heart in the world. It simply wasn't enough from Ali Black Wolf Guliev's relentless attack. And that is the key word to use, Kirik. Relentless got it done with a number of huge strikes. Just took up the position, the side control, essentially quarter guard then, and just landed, fight ending, devastating grind and points. We're getting a little bit of a replay, Brave Nation. That was a double leg that was thrown naked, shut down. That's the shot to the jaw. If it had hit the neck, it would have been lights out. There's the follow up. There was about seven shots that landed cleanly within about 10 seconds, and this is not the beginning of the end. This appears to be the end of the end. Beautiful work. Referee steps in. Oliveira popped his knees straight away, but those shots were getting through, and we have a fantastic finish. Let's throw it up to Carlos Kramer for the official decision. All right, what a way to start our Brave CF 68 NFC 11 night. This bout comes to an end at three minutes and 55 seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes, Ali Black Wolf in the light heavyweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and two losses. He stands 184 centimeters tall and weighs already 91.75 kilograms. Representing Jogla Camp and fighting out of Indonesia. Please welcome Willem. Alex Moster! And his opponent, fighting out of the right corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of one win and one loss. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs already 
92.75 kilograms, representing Bali MMA and fighting out of Indonesia. Give it up for our new own big baby, Sila Lucky. Your referee is Joshua Hamilton. Fireworks game. Brave Nation, this could end very, very soon. That was a huge leg kick. So, oh, look, these guys are firing shots off each other. And that one's good. Big takedown from Silalahi. Big Baby with a big takedown. Big Baby now in guard. Looks like he's going to be trying to pass that guard, although he does have the option of sitting in that half guard. For some fighters now, it is a favored place to be. You know, a lot of fighters happy to sit in that anchor position and land big shots, but great job by Moussa to get back to his feet. But what goes up? Must come down, trip take one. Beautiful work by Salahi. Moussa still stru throwing strikes from the bottom. Looking for a role that I really don't see very often at all. Needs to be wary of giving up his back here. Full side control for Salah. He makes try to work for the Kamura. Beginnings of a nasty little elbow came down. There is scope for Salah to throw elbows here. Mustafa now pin, pinned from north south. Big Baby moving to side control. Oh, legal that knee. knee is not legal. Trying to take the back. Choke in. is in place. Trying to get the rear naked choke. Oh, that's yeah. the side. Oh! <laughs> Another first round finish here at Brave at 66. I think Moonstar was actually out for two. My friend, we did not call that. I thought this was going to be ended by a destruction wow. and destroyed by a strikes. That <laughs> was a submission out of nowhere. Outstanding work from Big Baby. Throws out a backflip. There you see the top just before he goes out. Comes back to his senses and... As you say, Carrick, none of us saw that happen. The shot expression on the face of Carlos Kramer tells you everything you need to know. Look at that choke in. And Brave Nation, you can do a choke that cuts off the carotid artery in the side, or you can collapse the trachea. The trachea collapse is a nasty, nasty choke indeed. And you are seeing a near masterful application of it. Musto was topping before they even hit the grinds. Big B began it done with the first submission win in his professional career. Phil, we're gonna get to walk through, I'm hoping, that submission one more time, but in the meantime. We're waiting for the I's to be dotted and the T's to be crossed. There is a little process, Brave Nation. There's an official card. Time has to be written down on it. It has now been handed to the big man in purple, Carlos Kramer, and he is going to make it official. Oh, my Brave Nation, another explosive finish in the Brave CF66 Bali Indonesia cage. This comes to an end at one minute. 29 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by rear naked choke from Bali MMA, Arluan, Big Baby, Sheila Lange. Brave Nation. This first battle is three, five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist making his professional debut tonight. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 63.6 .6 kilograms. Representing Han Academy Salong and fighting out of Indonesia. Please welcome Randy, the Stinger, Fabian!
and his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, also making his professional debut tonight. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 63.2 kilograms. Representing Papua Top Team and Proximo and fighting out of Indonesia. Give it up for actor son, Andre Romano. Your referee is Cynthia Wichia. Stinger setting up his hands, playing maybe a little bit too quickly with the distance between him. He may get countered. Trying to work that inside leg kick. Fabian pressing hard. Maybe just a little bit too. Oh, big head kick. Oh, big head kick. As anticipated, the kicks are being fired off here. Fabian showing a very impressive ability to distance manage now. He's popping in, popping out, forward and back. It's only a matter of a few centimeters, but it's all he needs to hit or not get hit. There you saw it right there. We're likely going to see it again, and that, we saw the not hit, and that was the hit. Remind him a little bit tentative here, Carrick. I think that head kick put the manners on him. All right. Really is Fabian. Oh, big shot over the top. Yeah, he's a scary air of anticipation. You think one of these fighters just need that one big shot. They clearly have power. Nice level change from Fabian. Remind him it shifted. He'd gone from an orthodox to a southpaw stance, but he's now returned to his usual stance. He's trying to give his opponent some different looks. See if he can shake him, but so far he has not. Fabian looks very calm in there, Kerry. Like you say, that's all that experience from his K1 and his Muay Thai background. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Let's have another look at that action. And we just missed the shot, but the follow-up hammer fists. Referee made the right decision. You can see, remind him still a little bit. And Phil, with that, the Stinger is now going to go global. He has now been afforded the opportunity to fight for Brave Combat Federation internationally. Kerry, I think you could be looking at a broken jaw there. Unfortunately, something does appear to be not right with actress and Andre Ruminum. We do have an excellent medical staff on hand here. There are multiple ambulances, multiple doctors. I don't think any of that's going to be necessary, but that was a mighty shot from Randy, the stinger Fabian, and I'm very excited to say, Brave Nation, we are going to be seeing more of him. Kramer ascends to the cage to give us the official decision. All right, Brave Nation, what a way to start off our historic night here in Bali, Indonesia for Brave CF 66. This bout comes to an end at two minutes of the very first round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes, Randy the Stinger. Yeah. Here we go, Brave Nation. This first bout is three three minute rounds in a catch weight of sixty seven kilograms. Introducing your first warrior. 
Fighting out of the blue corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with an amateur record of two wins and one loss. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 66.9 kilograms. Representing Samurai Team Academy and fighting out of Iraq, please welcome Mohammed Salah Destroy Madei. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with an amateur record of one win and one loss. He stands 172 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 66.7 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Give it up for Ahmed Zaki. Your referee is Gar Lyons. And the crowd goes crazy. Huge thanks to our gold sponsor, Technographics. Again, massive thanks to our gold sponsor, Technographics. You can see teal of the tip. The Iraqi fighter, Mohammed Salamadi, is a little bit taller. Will he try and utilize that range, or will the KHK man get in for the takedown, as we know that they are so well-versed at doing? Both these men coming out of the orthodox stance. Wide base being adopted here by Ahmed Zaid. Destroy gets his name because both of his wins are by finish. Does have the edge and slight international experience as he has represented his country on the international stage. Doing so once again here. Both these fighters just trying to figure each other out. A little bit tentative right now. Oh, just as I say that, Ahmed comes crashing forward. Boom. Big overhand. Boom! Oh, scores a huge take out, but now takes the back. Back take looks like it's going to be the back mount. Momentarily had body triangle, but what work from Mohamed Salah to get back to his feet. Scramble, scramble, scramble. This is mixed martial arts. You saw the heart of it right there. Zaid finds himself on top, but it is Mohamed Salamari who's landing the shots from the bottom here. And this is not where Salamari wants to find himself with a KHK student inside his guard. Ahmed Zayed very wisely takes his opponent over to the fence, but he uses his head to hold his opponent down. In the absence of that head, the opponent could well start to wall walk up. Not pop possible right now, Phil. You can see just that level of control that Ahmed Zaid has. Beautiful head pressure as well, just compressing the body of Mohamed Salamadi, not allowing him any space with which to get up, with which to work. Very solid control, landing enough strikes to keep himself honest down there. Referee Gar Lyons is happy with the amount of action we're seeing. If you're Mohamed Salamadi right now, what do you need to be doing to get back to your feet? You open those feet first, Phil, and then there's a, a fairly simple recipe to follow. Elbow, knee, foot, hand, boop, you're up. And that's a lot easier said from our broadcast position as Ahmed Zaid is immobilizing any momentum. He's locking those hips down with his own elbows. Such intelligent work here to prevent Mohamed Salamadi. It must be stated, ladies and gentlemen, this is an amateur bout, therefore, the gloves are bigger, there are shin pads, there are no knees to the head or elbows allowed, and we are looking at three three-minute rounds, so you have to get your action in as quickly as possible. Ahmed Zayed doing an excellent job here, Phil. When you're very, very close to your opponent, it completely shuts down your opponent's movement. Howsoever, you cannot land hard shots. What we see Ahmed Zayed doing is posturing back momentarily, landing a big shot like you saw right there, and then boom, going back down tight again. 10-9, Ahmed Zayed.
afford to spend much more time on his bike. As we alluded to, Kerrick, these are three three-minute rounds. Therefore, you need to make an impact quickly. Howsomever, Muhammad destroys. Salamati cannot come straight in trying to make that impact. He's got to be a little more in and out, a little bit more side to side. We need to see oh, a few more shot. feints from him. He cannot stand in front of his opponent, as we're seeing right here. Good shot from Madi there. Managed just to evade those big looping shots of Amir Zaid. Nice level changes to try and get a reaction there from Ahmed Zaid. Salamati cannot back straight up as we saw there. He's got to circle out when he's facing trouble. I feel at any second both these fighters will just step forward. Needs to be wary of overreaching. Oh, he landed some decent shots. Good heavy hips, but that shows the tenacity of the KHK man. He is still trying to score the takedown. What scramble, a frenetic scramble, scramble. scramble. This is MMA. Brave Nation, all legit fights are won in scrambles. Needs to be wary of the guillotine. Pops the head right out. And once again, it is Ahmed Zaid who threw those transitions in a scramble, finds himself on top. And Phil, we know where this goes, right up to the fence, heavy top pressure, momentarily release of the pressure, only to feel the fires of a big shot coming down, and then, boom, squished again. Difference being this time that Mohamed Salah Mahdi has the guard open. I'd like to see him get those feet on the hips of Ahmed Zaid, try and push away. But right now, that's so difficult to do when you are being folded up like a deck chair by Ahmed Zaid. And look at that head control, Kerry. This, uh, this giraffe fighting on the ground is a central part of this aspect, this semi-grappling aspect of MMA. It's completely unique to this sport. Mm -hmm. Grappling, of course, there's an open mat. You're simply out of bounds. Nothing like it where there's a fence here. It is completely unique. There is no other sport that has an equivalent. A few solid little pot shots coming there from Salamadi on the bottom, but at the end of the day, he is still the man on the ball. Momentarily opened the hips there, looking for something, tried to throw the hips up, but it's very difficult to create an angle for yourself when you're being compacted so heavily against the cage. There was an attempt right there by Destroy to get his left heel into the hip. It was completely shut down by Ahmed Zayed, who simply shifted his hips even closer. And that is the key word, Kerik, there. Shut down. Any offense that Mohamed Salah Mahdi has offered has been completely shut down by Ahmed Zaid. Perfect display of what I like to call shut down jiu-jitsu at the moment. And Brave Nation, the reason that's popular is because Ahmed Zayed trains at KHK MMA Bahrain. He trains with monsters day in, day out. Because of that, he can feel when trouble's coming, shut it down before it happens. It's not speculation, Phil. It's absolute fact. Muhammad destroys. Salamati needs to get in there and take his opponent out. Now, he can, here's the trick. He can't do it simply by moving forward and throwing his big shots. Mm -hmm. He's got to feint just a little more. Move oh. in and out just a little more. He can't do that. He can't move straight as an opponent and try and land a big shot, or it's not going to go his way. Fantastic front kick right to the Chevy Chase. Again. 
And it's Zaid looking calm in there with the confidence of a man who knows he's up two rounds. That may give a little bit of credence to his strike and he knows he's secured two rounds. May open up and he's throwing some nice feints, some nice level changes to try and get a reaction from Mohamed Salamadi. Sla doing a nice job with the kicks, throwing them fairly lightly, setting up bigger kicks. He just can't let that, what he wants to do right now, Phil, is let that big right hand go. But he's got to hold back a little bit, got to set it up a little bit more. He's having difficulty trying to negate that range that's been established by Ahmed Zaid. Tried to spin on bike fist. Fans in here. Oh, huge shots again from Ahmed Zaid, showing that it is not just wrestling he's proficient at. Big knee from Destroy. Yeah, he had a big one right to the bread basket there, right to the midsection. Mohamed Salamadi really needs to turn it up. Momentary, uh, perhaps an entirely unintentional eye poke. We need to look at the replay in order to know for sure. Yeah, well, that is the difficulty. When you have these open finger gloves, sometimes when people are pulling out or reaching out to establish distance, a finger can errantly poke somebody in the eye. We're going to see a replay of it here. It was more so, yeah, as we see, just trying to establish that range. The hand was outstretched. Very much doubt it was intentional. Touch of the gloves to show there's no hard feelings regarding it. Right back into the action we go. No hard feelings. We got some hard punches coming up, Phil. Oh, head kick attempt. Might land in the triangle. triangle. If he can adjust here. He's got to control that head. Has to underhook the leg too. He's got the head controlled. Oh, this looks tight. He needs a little bit more of an angle. He needs to Spin underhook. He's spinning the wrong way. He's turning to the wrong side. He needs to underhook the right leg. Mounted triangle. Big shots here. Unanswered shots. The arm is there. Oh, what a Huge turnaround. Huge turnaround in this fight. Snatching a victory from the jaws of defeat. What a victory from Mohamed Salah. Madi inevitably going those two rounds, but manages to claw it back. That is absolutely incredible. What drama we have here in our opening fights. Brave Nation, quick reminder, this was an amateur bout. Amateur MMA is a development game. It is not a hurting game. Absolutely, positively, in a professional circumstance, that fight would have been allowed to continue, but this is not a professional fight. This is a development fight. Both these fighters are going to be far, far, far better for the experience. And our Lions made a great call there. This is to be enforced to the people watching. This is an amateur fight. So there are a number of unanswered blows. Yes, but they not a move like they The magic of mixed martial arts. You can turn an entire fight on a on a sin on a split second. All right, Brave Nation. This battle comes to an end when referee Gar Lyon stops about at two minutes and six seconds of the third round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes, Mohammed Salah Destroy Mate.
section. This is three five minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first, your first warrior fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and one loss. He stands at 181 centimeters tall and weighs in at 70.75 kilograms. Representing Akmat Fight Club, fighting out of Krosny, Russia. Please welcome Anzor Abdul Kazayev. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of eight wins, five losses and one no contest. He stands at 179 centimeters tall and weighs in at 70.75 kilograms. Representing Isaac team and fighting out of Uzbekistan. Give it up for Sanjabek, the serious Erkinov. Our referee in charge of the action is Dalambek Chukayev. Бойцы, правила знаем, не нарушаем. Внимательно слушаем меня. Пусть команды стоп, все действия прекращаем. Все ясно? Покажите красивый достойный бой. Удачи! Three five-minute rounds in the Brea CF lightweight division. 26 years old is Sanjabek. 25 is Anzor very close in height the weight is identical we are ready to go cage door being closed and Kerik, much like our first fight this has all the fixings of being an incredible exchange brave nation expect aggression anzur abdul khazayev doesn't know anything but it sanyarbek irkanov at his best when he's aggressive the glove touch has happened it's just about to blow up and if you're anzur abdul khazayev you haven't fought in over a year you're coming off a loss you want to go in and make a definitive statement here, especially in your lightweight debut. There's that wide base I was talking about, keep himself safe, in and out, lands the shot to the body, gets just outside of the pocket. Brave Nation, that shot to the body isn't necessarily to cause any damage, it's to get reads. Both fighters right now are trying to get information on their opponent. What's the opponent's limb length like? How quickly do they respond? Are they gonna, what kind of shots are they gonna throw? Could it be a big overhand right like that? Right now they're downloading a huge amount of information. The fighter who can download it the fastest said to have the better fight intelligence. Sanjar Beck needs to be wary of overreaching. You need to keep everything tight when you're facing someone like Anzor Abdul Kazayev. Again, right to the body. And they're going to be money in the bank. That's a cumulative damage, Kirik. That jab that landed earlier didn't in and of itself cause any damage, but it, 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 it allowed him to know, OK, I can touch him from there. Level change just a little bit lower. And the second time was oh, the other hand that reached out. Beautiful combination from Anzor into the clinch right now. And it's always dangerous when you clinch with an Akmat man. Good solid knees from Sanjar Bek Yurkinov right in the open forum of the mat here and we said that those jabs to the body were money in the bank those knees were money in the bank but look at that defense from Anzor just as I say that commentator's curse ends up on his back Sanjar Beck with a huge takedown now inside control Brave Nation Anzor wants to get on his side and try and get to guard he's got the hips turned slightly but Sanjar Beck has very very heavy hips I like how low Sanjar Beck is keeping the hips here. Position before submission. You can see Anzor Abdul Kazayev trying to get an underhook in, trying to create a little pocket of space to get the leg in. There Does it is. so beautifully, regards. As one butterfly hook, could hit a sweep here, chooses to go for guard, foot on the hip. That's usually indicative of a fighter trying to create space for a submission. May also see a quick pop-up attempt as soon as the downward pressure is off. Two feet in the hips. May Does try and tend push, to, yeah. Tend to, tend to indicate somebody wants to kick the opponent back and pop to standing. May try bites. There's that push-off, as you say. Needs to be wary of the up kick. Could fall into a triangle. Potential here for a triangle. But oh, the awareness of Sanjar Beck Irkinov just to shoulder ride that off. Beautiful work. He's got a height advantage, kept his position, kept his stance, didn't let that head get pulled way in front of the knee, was able to basically negate that triangle attempt before it ever was fully close to being in place. And Anzor Abdul Kazayev is being active from his back. He is trying 
to make things happen. If he was sitting in a closed guard the entire time, it would look like more of a defensive fire. But you can see he's trying to open up. Gets oh. back to his feet. Call with a huge shot. I am loving everything about this fight, Kerry. But Amzor Abdul Kazaya proving he has a chin. Just ate that shot and just kept coming forward. That Brave Nation is one of the dangers of popping up to standing. It's what every fighter on bottom wants to do, but you can get your back taken and you can get your face smashed. Beautiful sprawl needs to be on transitions. End of the mount. Make it a mounted guillotine here. This looks tight, Kerry. Hand positioning may be off by just a little. Santiago Beck here can off trying to survive a full minute for Anzar Abdul Kazayev to work. You can see the grimace on the face from our broadcast position. Oh, beautiful scramble from Irkinov, but he is not out of danger just yet. Able to regard, but he was in deep, deep waters there, proved that he doesn't need the water wings and he's able to swim in those deep waters. Reversal of positions now, it's Anzor Abdul Kazayev on top and Anzor could be bleeding here, Kerik. We do see a little bit of blood on his shoulder. Not quite sure where that cut might have occurred. Needs to be wary of every time Irkunov opens the guard. That's usually a trigger that he's going to try and work for something, either a get up or a submission. So Anzor Abdul Kazayev needs to be wise to that. Anzor wants to be just a little bit busier with his strikes from top. I think he's probably getting outstruck punch for punch. Neither of them, of course, has too much on him. Closing stanzas of the first rounds. A little bit strange there. We heard the 10 second clapper, then we heard a buzzer. We heard two buzzers there. Interesting. Excellent round, Phil. I can make a good argument for either fighter winning that round. Judges are going to have their uh, they're going to have their work cut out for them for that one. The harder shots were landed by Sanjay Bek Irkinov. The more dangerous shots were landed. But I would say that potentially Andrzej Abdul Kazayev came closest to finishing the fight with that submission attempt. So again, it's horses for courses. It comes down to the objectivity of our three judges. But that we see that shot again. That was beautiful. We did see that shot again on replay. All of us just did, Brave Nation. It wasn't quite as clean as it looked to be when I saw it the first time. A little bit of a glancing hook. It didn't look to be a, a shot that would end the fight. And that, that guillotine we saw, that mounted guillotine, was getting close enough to be potentially a fight ender. That's the basis on which I would say Unzer Abdul Kozayev won that round, but as I said, I could make a good argument for both fighters. It's the nose of Anzor Abdul Kozayev that opens up. Sanjay Bek Irkinov bound to be confident going into the second round here. Again, very much all to play for. As we said, both fighters did have moments in that fight where they were in the ascendancy, but if we're talking about he came closest to finishing the fight, it was Anzor Abdul Kozayev with that choke. What you saw there, Brave Nation, was the referee making sure there was no excess water on either of the fighters. Anzor very light on the feet. Great proponent of that in and out wide base Taekwondo, almost karate-esque style. Lands his shots, gets out of the pocket. But we've seen how quickly Sanjar Bek Irkunov can fire off a shot. The excitement we've had already. And this is only our second bout of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, have an incredible main event on the brave portion of the card with Oyas Iskariev taking on Rolando D. Incredible. Stay tuned for that in a little bit. Right now, it is Sanjar Bek Irkinov taking on Anzor Abdul Kazayev. And it's, it's Sanjar Bek who's skirting the cage. Could see Anzor try and pressure and take down, but big shot over the top. It's the way that Sanjar Bek can just spring forward into life. Looks docile, then all of a sudden, big shots. Anzor may be stalking just a little bit too much. Brave Nation, if you know what your opponent is going to do, you will win. Everything in this sport has to be disguised. Another big takedown attempt, but denied this time. Beautiful sprawl by Anzor Abdul Kazayev. Problem, of course, with that takedown attempt wasn't quite set up enough, kind of came out of nowhere. Needs to set that up with his hands, doesn't he carry a one-two or 
A 2-3 combination. Exactly, Phil. If you're not punching or your opponent's not punching, it's not the right time to shoot, there as you, you saw right there. That was a prime example of it, wasn't it, Kirik? Shot and blind. Anzor Abdukazayev had the time to assess. Download the data, as you say. Had the sprawl loaded. And right now, he finds himself in top position in that half guard or, or half mount, depending if you're a half full, half empty kind of guy. Anzor throwing some fairly hard shots from top. Trying to work up the body. And by working that body, he's trying to open up a shot to the head. Brave Nation, those shots may look like little more than annoying on television, but we are live here and in person. They are landing with impact. They are causing damage. And for anyone that's ever been hitting the ribs with an MMA glove, it just feels a little bit different. Sanjo Beck very much just holding on at the minute. Kerry, would it be within his best interest to try and re-guard, try and get full guard, or to create distance, shrimp out? Nice little elbows being landed by Anzor, just doing enough to keep himself honest to stop the referee from standing them up. Half guard, unfortunately. Half guard, Phil, as you know well, and grappling is the, the most pos point-rich position you can possibly be in. There's nowhere you want to be but bottom half guard. MMA, you're half mounted. This is not where Sonjarbek wants to hang out for the rest of this fight. And it is becoming a lot more popular as almost an anchor position from which fighters settle and do a lot of work there, accumulate damage, accumulate points. Sonjarbek's body is coiled. If there is any possible time he can get out he's waiting for it but right now as you said he's anchored down in that half guard and he's taking some punishment between the shots coming down from top and the riding time no question who's winning this round phil great work again to the body cumulative damage for anzor and if you could have made an argument either way for the first round the second round as you say pretty definitive thus far Andrew Abdukazayev just doing everything he needs to do, solidifying the position, landing strikes. So Njarbuk's body is coiled though. If he gets an opportunity, he's gonna pop to, he can pop to standing, he can try and affect a sweep. There's a lot of options he's got here right now, but unfortunately none of them are available. Well, the impetus now really does lie with Irkunov. He's the one that needs to make something happen. Abdul Abdukazayev is the one winning the fight in this position. And you can see the reddening up of the ribs really starting to take its toll. Phil, I hope very much that the referee does not stand him up. He has no need to. Realistically, Kirik, he has no need to. You often get situations in mixed martial arts where things aren't changing, and so the referees feel the need to, to do something different. But I, I, I think right now, the Ahmad fighter is doing everything he should. And you can hear the dull thud of those strikes. Short time now, Brave Nation. Be interesting to see like if the breathing of Irkinov is impeded by those multiple shots to the ribs. Is that, that is taking the wind out of the seals of Irkinov and a potential intelligent investment for Abdul, or for Anzor Abdul Kazayev going into the third and final round. Definitive 10 9 for Anzor Abdul Kazayev. Kirik, what do you think? 10-9, I agree. I don't believe any of our judges here think any other way. And Phil, there was a there was a beautiful little moment there, right when we heard the beep ending the round. Ansar Abdul Guzayev, who just spent the last three minutes raining down punches and elbows, just gave his opponent a friendly little friendly little tap in the hand, would offer to help him up if it wasn't rude. And it wasn't a call out in any way. It wasn't making fun of him. It was just like, hey, we're having fun, we're doing our job, we're in our office. Let's do it one more round. If you're in the corner of Anzor Abdul Kazayev, you will surely be saying, if you do exactly the same as you did in round two, you will win this fight. Irkunov, I expect him to come out with again the impetus that he lacked in the end of that second round. Come out with bad intentions. May even try and get the shots off on Anzor Abdul Kazayev. Feel a little innovation here in Kazakhstan. They have men with mops in the corners immediately ready to take up the water. I think that's something that the rest of the sport should adopt. Again, Anzor Abdul Kazayev takes the center of the cage, that predatory position that we know him by. 
leading the dance, forcing Irkinov to skirt the cage. But Irkinov coming forward now, trying to assert a little bit of dominance of his own. So Njerbek doing a good job now. He's not being too obvious with his attacks. Playing with the distance between them, circling left and right. Attacking when he thinks he sees something. Oh, that's a nice shot. Again, Irkinov overreaching a little bit, maybe because he's tired, but again, potential for this ninja choke here. Rolling with it. Fantastic. Oh, it's it's over. Just like yeah. that. Wow. Ansor Abdel Kazayev back in the winner's column. He threatened with it in the first round. He got it done in the third round. Kirik, talk me through that finish. Phil, all great fights in mixed martial arts are won in the scrambles. As long as the matchmaking is good, it's not going to be, nobody's going to get wiped out one side. It's always going to be won in the scramble. You open up the fight dictionary, the fight encyclopedia, go to scramble, and that's what you're going to see right there. Anzor Abdel Kazayev riding at eye like a bucking Bronco. Brave Nation, the reason that tap came so quickly, because it was a trachea choke, not a blood choke. It was not on the veins on the side of the neck. It was on the trachea. That trachea can get crushed. That was a very, very beautiful moment for our sport. I could watch that finish over and over again, riding out the position, going with your opponent, getting it tight. And it was on instantaneously. For our official decision, we are going to throw it up to double L. Lance Murdoch. Ladies and gentlemen, the fight was stopped after 49 seconds of the third and final round. And the winner, by way of guillotine, in the blue corner, Anzor Abdul Kozayev! Closure, Anzor Abdul Kazayev. Nation! This bout is three, five minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Introducing your first competitor. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and five losses. He stands 185 centimeters tall and weighs already 107.2 kilograms. Representing Tiger Sport Academy and fighting out of Stuttgart, Germany by way of Bulgaria. Please welcome Lazar, the Punisher, Todd And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of one win and no losses. He stands 200 centimeters tall and weighs already 106.15 kilograms. Representing MMA spirit and fighting out of Frankfurt, Germany. Give it up for Patrick. Il Gladiatore Vantaziani! Your referee is Jan Forboni. Hairs literally standing up on the back of the neck during those introductions by the one and only Carlos Kramer. You can see from the graphic the height advantage goes to Vespaziani. Weight relatively similar, but how much of a factor will that height play? All depends on whether the fight takes place on the outside or the inside. This crowd absolutely wants to see it taking place on the outside with Vespaziani's big shots landing first. Lazar is a proven finisher, does like those big looping hooks. But as I say, both these guys so well credentialed in kickboxing, this makes for a very interesting fight. Beautiful job right from the get-go from Patrick. Phil Todev looks just a little dry to me. He may have warmed up a little early, may not quite have warmed up enough, may take him a little while to get into this fight. Patrick maintaining the distance very well here. 
Just those long arms, he has the... Oh, comes over the top. He might have stung him a little there. Tudov trying to take some of that respect back, trying to throw a couple of hooks of his own. Very nice countering by Vespasiani. He's just a little bit slower off the mark at the minute as Todov, but as we know in heavyweight MMA, it just takes one shot to get through. Nice and light on the feet as Vespasiani. Todev's jabs have a little bit of a sign on them. They're not thrown naked. They're not thrown naked, but could use a little bit more fainting. It's a couple of times Vespasiani has invested in the body. Vespasiani using that, that body shot, of course, because it hurts, but also to maintain distance, keeping his opponent on the end of those six foot, seven inch arms. And it lets your opponent know that if you try and come into my realm, if you try and invade my space, I'll front kick you right back out of it. Oh, nice bit of counter strike, but I think Todov got one through there. Todov also got his leg shaking a little bit. There are only so many of those leg kicks that one can absorb. Very, very smart strategy. Nice to see Todev going down to the body before throwing that hook up to the head. Again, Phil, just a little wild, just a little wide. Todev wants to set his shots up a little more carefully. Fantastic composure from Vespasiani. At one and O, exhibiting a type of calm you would expect from a seasoned heavyweight pro. And that job is just finding a target every time. Kicks of the big man. If you're exchanging jabs, Phil, with a taller opponent, it's not going to be a good night for you. Todev needs to move that head there. There's the head starting to move. Needs to move that head a little bit more and not stop it. And standing back, he's just shy. Trying to jab a couple of times now, he's too low. The partisan right here are very much in the corner of Patrick Vespasiani. Vespasiani initiates the clinch here and being so tall, really have to change levels to get that chin underneath. Nice defense from Todov. Back and forth jabs. Vespasiani seems to be upping the output a little bit more now. That jab every time is just laser sharp. He's opened up a little bit of a cut under the right eye of Todov. Phil, I believe Todev is actually landing the harder shots. I do believe he's the heavier striker, but his volume is just off. Both men wearing the fight, is the nose ever so slightly bloody with Paziani. It's the levels every time you see this Paziani, he attacks the head, the legs, the midsection. Todorov doesn't know where these attacks are going to come from. Just a pushing that final minute of the first round. Very nice exchange of low kicks. Vespasiani ate one, and in his mind, he said, anything you can do, I can do better. I'm the toughest. And he threw one right back. Essentially, been watching him. Kickboxing fight and MMA gloves. It's been scintillating. Yeah. As we alluded to, Kirk, it seems to be Tudov has the, the greater power, but the frequency and the accuracy lies with this Paziani. Part of the effect of Todov's kicks that you see on his opponent's face right now is because his opponent is constantly moving forward. As you see right there, Todov is able to take the sting off of those shots by backing up. Your gladiatory, no backup in the man, he's showing the price for that on his face. Pretty much from the first bell line, hasn't he, Kirk? He's not loading up on his shots. I'm enjoying that. He's not loading up on the shots. He's going to be the Phenomenal first round for both fighters. Todev started off slow, but he seems to have gotten a little bit of momentum in the last two minutes of the fight. If I was a judge, I would likely give it to Vespasiani. But as they say, never leave it in the hands of the judges.
Accumulated damage. These are big men. They got hands like suitcases, fingers like cricket bats. Yeah. Yeah. Nice combination work. A oh, big take down for And reversal in up. Popping right back up. You've got a choice stuck in the front head, and they're up. And they're back at him. Big shot over the top. Predicated off that kick. Nice stiff jab again from Tudov. Also enjoying just how strategic and clinical these strikes being thrown out. These aren't just two big men who are throwing for the sake of throwing, hoping something lands. These are two strategists. These are two clinicians. Their technique is excellent, which is a little bit unusual for the heavyweight division. A lot of heavyweights can get away with not as much training as they should put in. But that cannot be said for these two. Yeah, technically, they are very, very clean fighters. combination work again from Vespasiani. Vespasiani starting to follow up his combinations with a low kick. That's clearly some advice he's gotten from his corner. Can't do it too many times or he's going to get countered. Caught opened up again underneath the right eye of Todov. Both men not throwing anything unnecessarily. Trying to find the mark. As far as to say thus far, the second line has been a better round for those R2 dog. He's still absorbing some. Oh, huge head kick! Mighty, sweet mighty kick! Low. Beautiful combination work. Head kick and sweeping the leg low. But Tudov showing just how tough he is. Completely eats a head kick. Never been knocked out in his professional MMA career. We can see why he's broken a few hands, but that that head it's not going to break. Again, right to the dome. Tudor just walks right through it. Maybe an accidental eye poke. We may get a chance to look at it, Phil, on the instant replay. That is the, the issue with us. The issue is uh, as old as time, or really as old as mixed martial arts, is that issue with the eye pokes when someone has the hand out reaching because of the fingerless element of the gloves. Phil, it was an issue in boxing for literally 100 years. They finally decided to take the thumb down on boxing gloves, but of course in MMA, because of the necessity to grab, that is impossible. A little bit of discussion between the fighters. It may have been, it may have been the thumb knuckle. I think that's what was being motioned at. No, Todev is indicating that he did not hit him with an illegal part of the hand. As far as I'm aware, if it's the thumb knuckle, that's still legal. Your gladiatore is indicating he's a little bit irked about what happened. That is not a man you want to get annoyed. This is in the confines of the Brave Arena. Ladies and gentlemen, these may look like glancing blows, but from our broadcast position, we can hear the connection and we can see firsthand the damage being done by both men. Phil, as I said in the very beginning, Todev looked a little bit, a little bit dry, but he's completely warm now, and he really is starting to get his timing down. Kick for kick, you can see the reddening just underneath the shorts and that thigh of Vespasiani. Vespasiani was distance managing very, very effectively with that front kick, with that teeth, but he's no longer doing it. I don't know if it's because of, of, of conditioning. Well, I'm wondering, he's taken quite a few shots to the nose there. The nose might be busted up, and I'm wondering if that's now an impediment to his breathing. But as we know, if you take a good solid shot to the nose, it is, he's wiping at the nose. He has to breathe through the mouth now, Kirik. And of course, when that mouth is open, if it gets hit, yeah. it can be good night. A good shot by Toto. There 
very much growing into this fight is Two Dog, a veteran of 11 professional points. Superman punch, find his mark. Big man with the Superman. We've got less than a minute to go, Brave Nation. Two Dog starting to up the ante a little bit, throwing big shots. Knee glances, but still, these are big men, they still hurt. Both these men are going to have trouble walking up the stairs tomorrow. Oh, beautiful knee in the clinch. Both these gentlemen have excellent knees. Oh. Like to see him use them a little more. Big straight landed. I don't think Tudov realized just how clean that shot was. Oh, and then a big shot from Paziali. The gladiator still may not have his feet underneath him completely. He was a little bit rock there. Losing stances at the second round. Anybody leave a definitive mark. And there was a low blow. Referee should. Yeah, the referee has called time. We only have several sec seconds left. The fighter at this point will be given as much time as he needs, Brave Nation, to recover. Just like the eye poke or the knuckle poke, it's completely inadvertent. Referee signals to keep the kicks up. Touch gloves, round just about to end. Look at that thigh of Vespasiani. Already turning black. Phil, Todev fighting in foreign territory is going to believe he may be down two rounds to none. He's going to try to finish this round. That nose has opened up again like a badly installed top leaking all over the place. Now that nice short elbow, but because of his frame, because he's so tall, his elbows don't have a lot of ground to cover. Stand up at Tim Mount. Has the mount. Oh, this could be the beginning of the end. Beautiful war walk. No way. Fantastic from technique. Back to the feet. Serious work from both men. That wall walk is one of those moves, Phil. It's tough to pull off in the gym in a fight like this. Shots. That was amazing. Big shots getting through for Lazar Todov. Oh, short elbow in the clinch. Expect more of those. The Punisher is living up to his name here. Both of these guys have serious chins. Mouthpiece is out. Referee has to wait for a natural break. Spitting the best fight has everything. Mouthpiece back in. I do believe here comes the boom. It's got to the stage. It's almost as if both men made an agreement just to throw shots at each other. What are these behemoths made of, Kerry? 
Big shot over the top again from Todov. Well, Gladiatore is flagging. Yep, he's got him on the back foot. Oh, but throws a head Beautiful kick. Beautiful head kick, and he's down. Rolls, can't get up in time, looking for a single, stuck in front head. Go behind. Granby roll attempt, side control. This is not the position you want to be in with a 106 kilo man on top of you. The Punisher can now decide to forward his position or stay inside control and strike. Appears to be taking the latter option. He's just solidifying the position now, landing elbows. Yeah, a cheeky little 12 to 6 elbow in there. The referee didn't see it. And look at the bruising on that. What has this Paziani got left in the tank here, Kerry? The deep waters of mixed martial arts. Step to mount. Phil, it was a step to mount with no attempt to defend against it. This is about the longest two minutes a human being can endure. I'm just about to say there, Kerry, the deep waters of mixed martial arts are not where you want to find yourself when you're severely depleted. Referee taking a long, We're hard a look short, at it. Short time, Brave Nation. Is this intelligent defense? Short time. That's, That's it. it. Lazar to these competitors this fight comes to an end when referee Jan Forbonik stops about at three minutes and 23 seconds of the third round your winner by TKO due to strikes Lazar the Punisher This X battle is three, five in rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of eight wins and no losses. He stands 182 centimeters tall and weighs already 67.3 kilograms. Representing WGC team. I'm a costume and fighting out of Afghanistan. Please welcome Sayed Dollar Marteza Sadar. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins and two losses. He stands one 76 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.6 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Give it up for Camille Montemano. Your referee is the Vanilla Gorilla, Aaron Wallace. 
The warrior Sadat from Afghanistan is facing across the brave cage from a tank. And when you have a tank coming towards you, you got to get out of the way. Referee Aaron Wallace is your third man in the middle. I don't think it's going to be any surprise to anybody what the game plan of Magomedov is. A decorated former world champion in Brazil in jiu-jitsu. 12 of his wins by submission. Four rear naked chokes, four guillotines, two arm triangles, and two triangles, which shows just how dangerous he is with a multitude of submissions. Sadat moving those hands, likely to let one go momentarily. Just trying to get a read. Yeah, again, the hallmark of the KHK team at Bahrain Fighters is taking that time to download the data to assess, to take in the, the full range of weapons that your opponent has and then react accordingly. Phil, this is very much a sport in which patience is a oh, big shot. And here we see the clinch, the inevitable clinch from Magomedov gets the trip and right now this is exactly where he wants to be. The inevitable clinch, the inevitable takedown and the inevitable forwarding, furthering of position. Please. I don't want to say the submission's inevitable, but the submission's kind of inevitable, correct? <laughs> Good job by Sadat to get that half guard back. Yeah. Brave Nation athlete of this caliber, a submission master of this caliber. The reason behind these punches is not necessarily to cause damage, it's to get the opponent to move. When you can get the opponent to move in a predictable fashion, you can further position. That will in turn create submission opportunities. Magomedov trying to work. Good job by Sadat to re-guard. Nice guard work by the warrior from Afghanistan. Yeah, he's gonna wanna try and get back to his feet, scoot back to the cage, base off a hand, base off an elbow, up to a hand and get down. Bit of body, body, head, maybe coming up. Oh, quick! Steps through brilliantly, doesn't he? Looks like quick he's trying to isolate. To half guard. Looks like he's trying to isolate the arm on the left side of Sadat. He may well try and isolate both. He's got one isolated. He may slide that near shin across the bicep, elbow area, pinning both of them. There we go. Trying to work for the Kimura. I think get that bigger four grip. Yeah, the hands are coming close together, closer together, closer together. Interestingly though, he's never won a fight via submission, or sorry, via Kimura. He does have 12 wins by submission. It would be his first Kimura. But Vicious <laughs> elbow. Let's it go just to crash an elbow into the dome of Sadat. One of the main techniques, Brave Nation, behind throwing an elbow on the ground is you try and get, you try and hold the shot back and then spring into it. You saw a perfect example of it there. needs to try to get back to his feet here. He's just being punished in every conceivable way by Magomedov. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, of course, a beautiful defensive art. Oh, just cuts right through the end of the mount. Sadat needs to be careful of throwing up those arms. Nice regard from Sadat. You have to give credit to Sadat for when he finds himself in those positions, he is working well to get the guard back, the half guard. He is, but unfortunately, guard is, is purely a defensive position. Yeah. He's got to open those feet up and start trying to sweep, start trying to stand, start trying to strike, to submit, to take the back. There's a whole number of options here, but trying to survive with a man like Magomedov on top of you is not a great option. Just cuts through into originally half guard, then side control. And may try and work that arm again. Oh, there's the mount, like a hot knife for butter. Brave Nation, what you're seeing here is, is danger being applied guard. from so many different directions. There's positional danger. There's danger from the hand. There, here triangle. we go. Is he impeded by the cage? Though? He's he going to make space? it work. Watch this. Watch this technique. Oh, Look that at is that. Beautiful. Look at that. Creates the angle. Don't there's care about top. walls. And there's a tap. 13th win via submission in the career of Kamil Magomedov. Third win by our arm triangle submission. 11th win in the very first round. Very few fighters would have even realized that was possible. The cage was in the way. Doesn't matter, walk right through, walk right off that cage, make it work, and it did work. How many submissions was that, Phil? That is now 13 submission wins 
and 11 wins in the very first round. Nine wins by a submission in the very first round. And look at what he was able to do. As you said, Kirik there, beautifully created the angle for himself, forcing his opponent to move to give him space. And once he got in that position, low down with the knee against the hip to prevent Sadat from turning in, the submission, the tap was inevitable. Absolutely phenomenal technique. I think Sadat didn't realize how much danger he was in for the same reason I didn't see the danger until it was a little bit farther along. The fence was in the way. You've got to walk through where a fence was to make that work. Well, Magomedov made it work. Absolutely unbelievable performance from the KHK Team Bahrain exponent. Our hats go off to Sadat. Not many people would want to get in there on relatively short notice against a man like Kamil Magomedov, but Right now, all the plaudits, all the accolades go to Mago Medov, getting it done once again. A beautiful submission finish and picking up his first win here in Brave Combat Federation. Sadat was doing an absolutely terrific job matching guard against forms of top control. Wasn't able to handle, however, the strikes and eventually that submission. What an explosive finish becomes at four minutes and seven seconds of the first round. Your winner by head and arm triangle from KHK Team Bahrain, Camille Magomedov. is three five and rounds in the light heavyweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a big martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and one loss. He stands 182 centimeters tall and weighs already 92.9 kilograms. Representing Gurum Fight Club and fighting out of Georgia, please welcome Mikhail Spartan Sardiniani! And let's welcome his opponent, fighting out of the red corner! This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of four wins and no losses. He stands 185 centimeters tall and weighs already 93 kilograms. Representing KHK Team Bahrain and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Please welcome Mertaza Tepa. Your referee is abandoned, Dickie Larkin. Brave Nation, you are about to witness power. Let's make some noise! Always exciting to see big, light heavyweights in there. Mortaza, so workmanlike in his approach, gets in, gets it done. Another day at the office for the big man. Light heavyweight division, in my opinion, the most dangerous. Heavyweights tend to be not always in the, the greatest condition, not always the greatest athletes. Start getting smaller, don't hit quite as hard. This, These are the most deadly men on the planet. Just as you say, both these men hit hard. Big winging shot from Murtaza. Solid takedown from Mikhail, but Murtaza Talha bounces right back up. And now it's Mikhail. Pressing the action, pushing Murtaza Talha against the cage. And this is a position he hasn't really found himself in so far in his mixed martial arts career. He's not fighting quite yet. There you go. He's oh. not. There you go. There you go. That is power. Solid Brave knees. Nation, that is power. 
putting absolutely everything into those huge knees and they are money in the bank should this fight continue. Murtaza Tala not trying to reverse because he's comfortable where he is right here. He's downloading information, he's downloading tells, learning what his opponent does and he's gonna take advantage of him at some point in the next 90 seconds or so. I think he's realized just how dangerous Mikhail Zashiniani is early, but again, huge knee right to the chin. He may, may have rocked him. Mataza sensing a little blood in the water. Good job by Mikhail to get the clinch again. Mortaza Tala took that time when his back was up against there and he got some reads. He realized his opponent is open to knees. He landed at least one to the body. Then he realized there was one open to the head and he took it. We may see that again. Over under position, clamping down. And those knees are finding a home every time for Mortaza Talha. It's what he learned when his back was pinned up against the fence. Digging in for an underhook is Mikhail. I'm sorry, my mistake is Mortaza was digging in for that underhook for control. Momentarily work on the single for Mikhail. Again, folks, that takedown attempt was actually pretty, pretty serious, but that overhook there, lifting up by Mortaza Tala is, is unstoppable. Again, one of the most punishing positions in mixed martial arts is this over under against the cage. Nice little short uppercut again. A big one. From Mortaza. Knees are unsteady. Those legs are unsteady. Another big shot. Mataza getting through with these shots. Desperation clinch from Mikhail Zashiniani. When you get a shot to the head, Brave Nation, that the, the brain needs five to 10 seconds to clear. That clearing process has probably happened by now. Legs are back underneath the fighter, but it's easier to take that head again. One more shot's gonna have a little bit more effect than it did the last time. Mortaza just taking his time because he knows he can land dangerous strikes should he find an opportunity. He hasn't really been put in any trouble yet. Mortaza very comfortable here. He's getting information on areas he can hit, waiting for just a little more separation. Knee will come in again. Great work to change the position from Mortaza. Changing defense into attack. Has back control right now, and just landing shots, nice little elbow. Digging in for the underhook to try and raise that level is Mikhail Zashishiani. Each fighter now getting a chance to test the other's defense against takedowns. Forced to drop to a knee, nice control of the ankle, very subtle. Oh. Takes the back. One hook's in. Mortaza does have a win on his ledger via rear naked choke. A second hook is in, Brave Nation. Pressure on those hips coming. Defeated. Devastating pressure on those kidneys coming. Does have a decent little high. Went to the over arm the top. Bar. Got the arm bar. Oh, he's hips down. That's it. It's over. Another finish for Mortaza Talha. That is power. Mortaza Talha is on fire fire here he is lit up i don't know if there was a little bit of needle between the two but that is a fired up fighter brave nation who's the man eldar eldarov in the corner now just calming down his fighter just saying to him martaza you just won in the first round be happy Mortaza Tala making a big statement, big showing. Good There's shot. that, the hips are in place. Hands are pulling up in the wrist, hips are driving down. Right, there just. is only two options here, snap or tap. Hips down so heavy, gets the tap, has the point of the elbow the whole time. Textbook work from the back take to the arm bar. Again, we see the little shove there. And it was followed up by a little mouth. A little toss of the mouthpiece. Maybe it was an attempt to engage in a, a friendly game of, of, of mouthpiece frisbee. Or perhaps it was expressing a little degree of being upset over something that transpired between the two of them. I just hope they take Mataza for an ice cream or something afterwards. He, he deserves it. Hey, who doesn't like an ice cream? You can't be mad when you're having an ice cream, Kerry. I also hope he doesn't listen back to the commentary. 
That adrenaline dump is passing out of his body. For the record, folks, heart rate right now about 145, possibly as high as 150. In a couple of seconds. It'd be All right, Brave 100. Nation, another insane battle inside our historic Brave CF 57 cage. This comes to an end at four minutes and 22 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by armbar from KHK Team Bahrain, Martaza Taha! This fight is three five and rounds in the Bantamweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of five wins and no losses. He stands 169 centimeters tall and weighs already 59.5 kilograms. Representing Hero Academy and fighting out of Alexandria, Egypt. Put your hands together for my Sara And his opponent, fighting out of the right corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a record of 12 wins and three losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs a rating 61.7 kilograms. Representing IJJ, Ultimate MMA, and BFC Gym, and fighting out of Bangalore, India. Please welcome Mohammed Shah A. Gorilla and Wallace. Big thanks to our hospitality partner, Wyndham Garden Manama. I consider Bahrain to be my second home, and my home in my second home is Wyndham Garden Manama. The Vanilla Gorilla, once again, your man in the middle, number one bantamweight in India versus the number one flyweight in Egypt. 5 0 oh versus 12 and 3. Beautiful little sidekick to the knee on the part of our fighter from Egypt, Sara Mohammed. Farhad, much more experienced on the international stage. Nice and calm, trying to get off with those leg kicks, showing that Muay Thai background. Changing levels well, kick to the leg, kick to the body. Wasn't quite on court with the hands yet. Little fake of the knee to try and elicit a reaction from Sara. That lead side kick to the knee, you can find in self-defense manuals from the 1910, 1920s, only recently has been widely adopted in mixed martial arts. It can be not just effective, but vicious. Solid leg kick from Masara Mohammed. push kick to the knee. That side kick was just a little bit too low. If you hit on the kneecap itself, it can actually hurt your foot. You wanna hit just above it, half an inch or so above that kneecap. Fakes with the hands coming up top. Masara leading the dance a little bit here, but it's almost as if Farhad is just waiting to uncork a big right hand here. <laughs> Farhad clearly getting some tells, getting some reads, trying to download knowledge about his opponent, but he's got to start using him because he is falling behind slightly on the judges' scorecards. Farley is a kick into a spinning back kick. Both men keeping a low stance. Neither one seems interested in clinching with a takedown right now. Interestingly, neither man has a win on their ledger by submission. But they like to get it done on the feet. And if you have knockout power. Beautiful straight right hand. If you have knockout power with these tiny four-inch gloves, 
That's what I was alluding to earlier, Phil, when I said he's getting a lot of reads here. He's getting tells. He's learning what his opponent does at certain points. And then he's trying to take advantage of him with that big right hand. Osara Muhammad, he's got a big straight of his own. He's got a cock by his jaw. The implant of Masara Muhammad seems to be to attack that lead leg, particularly the knee of Farhad. Attacking that knee joint, if it injures the joint, great, that's a win. It also allows you to maintain distance, keep your opponent where you can set up that high uh, round kick off your back leg. It also takes the pop out of the step. As we know, Farhad so good at changing and covering distance quickly. If you take the knee out, you won't be able to be as quick to the punch, as sharp. My Sara showing, as you referred to earlier, a little bit of a, a karate stance, a little bit of a taekwondo stance, not setting down fully on his shots. It means they don't hit quite as hard, but it definitely increases the likelihood of them landing. No rush or impetuousness on the point or on the part of Farhad at the moment. Both these fighters can knock the other one out in a split second. If either of them shows any impetuosity, it could end in a split second. That's great. Oh, nice shot got through there from Mysara. Little nod of acknowledgement from Farhad. Always has that big right hand. Then the locker lands it beautifully. Very impressive. Suffered a three punch combination, one of which hit. Delivered a three punch combination, one of which hit. Mysara's sidekicks that lead leg start to bother Muhammad Farhad, he simply needs to circle a little bit. Nice that kick is no longer there when you circle around. Nice little check kick from Mysara, caught Farhad coming in. A minute to go in the opening round of what's been a, a tentative affair for the most part, but both men have landed big shots. Little interesting psychological wrinkle. They're actually staring at each other's eyes. Ordinarily, in a fight, you stare at what's called the T. There's a line, the chest, but yeah, the, yeah. Uh, line between the point of the shoulders right down the middle of the body. There's a letter T right there. I don't want to say you stare at it, but you're aware it's there. These two are looking at each other straight in the eye, silently daring each one to attack. Masai doing the right thing by not standing in the pocket and getting into a fire fight with Masai. He's feeling himself a little bit now. Keeping everything in kicking range is Masara Muhammad. Very exciting mix. Very, very unusual, but nevertheless intelligent strategy here. Distance managed by a brutal side kick to the knee. Set up exciting head kicks. A little acknowledgement on the part of Muhammad Farhad of his opponent. Is a respectful acknowledgement, just a nod, little tap of the hand. I'm liking what I'm seeing as far as game planning and distance management from Masara Muhammad, as I said. The last thing he wants to do is stand in the pocket, stand within punching distance of Muhammad Farhad, who, as we say, does have so many knockout TKO victories on his legend. If you were to play Judge Phil, which, of course, neither of us aren't, who would you give 10, who would you give 9? Again, a very close round, but for the the frequency of attacks and the accumulative damage, the, the, the push kicks to the knees, the, the spinning attempts, the, the counter shots landed. I would say for me, and again, I am not a judge by any stretch of imagination, my Sara Mohammed just edged it for me ever so slightly. I agree completely, and we're getting a little treat of that on our Green Hill replay. Replay over. Round two is on in moments. Gates closed, fighters ready. Expect to see a little bit more urgency from Mohamed Farhad trying to get in those low kicks. Just as I say that, throws a leg kick. Chance of let's go Egypt. Starting to rattle through the crowd a little bit. Mysara may be letting his opponent get just a little close. There it was. Nice, just clipped the chin. Mysara just a inch too close, allowing his opponent just an inch too close, just a little too confident. Perhaps got a little bit too comfortable there. Farhad as yet hasn't chosen to close the distance and get in 
to that danger zone. Both say, fighters, of yeah. course, capable of intricate wrestling games, intricate submission games. But right now, they are intent man to man on seeing who's the better striker. Asar Muhammad has held multiple regional titles in his native Egypt. Trying to put it all together now. You can see that he has that professional K1 boxing experience. Mysaris backs a little too close to that fence. Yeah, you like to see him some lateral movement, kind of skirt on the outside, along the outside, as opposed to backtracking up to it. Putting together strikes well. He just comes so quickly. And I think Bantamweight seems to be a much better fit here for Mysaris Mohammed. Interestingly, though, it's Farhad in on the takedown. A little change of pace here with big. Big results. We did not see this coming. Big takedown, huge fence grab. Oh, we're gonna get a stern, stern, stern warning for the fingers inside the fence. The referee Arn Wallace was not happy about that. Yes, the takedown was completed, but it stalled the momentum of the takedown a little bit. What we were gonna see was a big dump takedown, but what we saw was the impact being lessened from the fence grab, which allowed Masara Muhammad to get back up a little easier. Be very interesting to see where this fight has started from. You want to see restarted from standing. There you see, and it just takes a little impact out of it. Right back into the action. Masara going back to the well with that low kick. And what that little push kick to the knee does, it kind of puts a little tick in the mind of Mohammed Farhad, thinking that that's coming, which then gives credence to the level changing, going up with the strikes. Same thing with that little feint of an outside single. Showing the uppercut to try and elicit a reaction. Turns it into the straight. Isn't far away when he's going to the head with that kick. I think Muhammad Farhad should have pulled the trigger when he saw that back exposure. Job and right now, Farhad still trying to figure out the, the puzzle that is my Sara Muhammad. His karate based style is, is very unusual for mixed martial arts. It does take a while to get the hang of. Oh, beautiful counter shot there again. So that's what happens when Farhad tries to get in and close that distance. He gets clipped with that lead counter hook. I would like to see. Masara follow that up with a straight again, just pings him with that counter hook. That lead hook is absolute money for Masara Muhammad. Again, if he were to follow that up with a cheeky little straight right down the pipe, who knows what kind of a, a result that could have. If anything, it's Masara Mohammed, who's been turning up the, the work rate a little bit in the second round. I think he edged it out in the first round. That may have given him a degree of confidence, lent him a little more fire for round two. Yeah, giving him that little bit of a bump to think, yeah, I deserve to be in here with somebody like Mohammed Farhad. Just to pick those hands up a little bit. It's great to be confident, it's not great to be arrogant. Fiance again, just trying to keep Mohammed Farhad where he wants him to let him know that should he charge in, there'll be a shot waiting in the chamber. A couple of times in this bout. Oh, here's a big straight, straight left hand. Oh, he's it's going, over. that's it. It's over, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, Masara Mohammed with the biggest win of his mixed martial arts career knocks out the knockout artist we were calling for in commentary. The hook followed up by the straight. When he does it with fight ending precision, big win. Let's look at this one a second time. Boom, there it is. Straight left hand. Reminds me just a little bit of who, Phil? Friend of Brave Combat Federation, Conor McGregor. Beautiful, straight left out of that southpaw stands. 
Concussive force landing on the cheek. I just Far, Farhad was out, out right there. Well, not out, but he was completely dazed. Referee Aaron Wallace giving Muhammad Farhad every opportunity to continue in the fight. Forced to stop the action by Sarah Muhammad. Moves to six and O oh with his fourth win by a KO or TKO. And obviously, the move up to Bantamweight has paid dividends for my Sarah Muhammad. I think he may have found a new home here. Phil, it's one of the things I love to see. The scourge of mixed martial arts is the culture of extreme weight cutting. It's the fight before the fight. It, it, it's a fight that leaves athletes so they often can barely walk just over 24 hours before the actual fight. I'd like to see the end of extreme weight cutting in mixed martial arts, seeing fighters move up and do even better. It just warms my heart. We're getting a call for a title shot here. Now he's going to be a very interested spectator during the, the Hamza Kowaji Brad Katona fight. Quite possibly the very best version of Mysara Mohammed we have seen. And at only 23 years of age, the sky is the limit for this young man. There used to be a misconception, Phil, that those karate style punches didn't have enough pop on them to work in the mixed martial arts cage. Like all martial arts, they have to be tweaked, they have to be modified to work under mixed rules, but that punch works. Masar Muhammad just taking in the adulation of the crowd. And as I say, who knows what's next for this young man? Referee Arm Wallace calling him into the center. Carlos Kramer is ready to give the official decision. Trying to get the fighters to center stage. So the big man, Carlos Kramer, the Los, the Roaring Lion of Brave, can make it official for all of us. All right, Brave Nation, another incredible battle inside the Brave CF 57 cage. This comes to an end at four minutes and 31 seconds of the very second round. Your winner by TKO, Maisana Bye. In the band weight division, introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner, this man's mixed martial artist with a professional record of three wins and two losses. He stands 167 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 61.6 kilograms. Representing Fight Baza Jim and Fight out of Uzbekistan, please welcome Maruf Jung. Mama Rosico! <laughs> and his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man of the mixed martial arts is making his professional debut tonight. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.68 kilograms. Representing Sheriff Fighters and fighting out of Tajikistan, give it up! For Adam Minzora Saeed Hamad Yom! Your referee is Shermatov Abdul Fatal. Phil, our undercard is a Central Asia extravaganza. We have no Uzbek versus Uzbek fights. This, the first fight, is Uzbekistan versus Tajikistan. A fight we're all very much looking forward to. As a big fan of the striking, we have a master of sports in kickboxing. We have a two-time national boxing champion. Interesting to see how quick or how long these guys stay on the feet, Kirk. Until somebody drops. Both guys fighting out of the orthodox stance and spinning heel kick to open up from Abdomen Zoda, showing no signs of nerves in his professional debut here. 
Just caught on the gloves with that spinning heel kick. But that's a sign of intent right now, isn't it, Kirik? It is. Humayun is showing a great deal of poise right now. In on that single. And gets the takedown. He is a shot. successful. Got to avoid the triangle now. Yeah, a shot there. Tried to parlay it and just going to back first. But as you say, creeping that guard up, you wonder just how much of a ground game does Abdelman Zuda have, given the fact all his accolades are in the striking realm. Good stand up. Twice he's gone with that spinning back kick. Might be going to the well a little bit too much with it. Nice and calm from Marouf John. Big shots being landed. Guys are not wasting any time whatsoever. Lead head kick attempted there by Saeed Humuyun. Big swing and a miss, but lands in top position. Does Maruf John? Saeed Humuyun showing where he's comfortable, and that's at long range with the kicks. Much less comfortable exchanging in close. We're going to see how comfortable he is fighting off his back now. This is among the most miserable places to be in mixed martial arts. He has that guard open. That's usually indicative of a fighter trying to do something, trying to enact something happening. If he closes that guard, you know that it'll be more of a stalling technique. Nice work from Mamar Zekov trying to get his opponent pinned up against the cage. This is one of the big questions now. It used to be you wanted to stay in center cage. Uh, you wanted to get your opponent up against the cage because they couldn't stand up. But this sport has evolved now, and a lot of a lot of fighters are actually good at using that fence to pop up to standing. Uh, and we've got a full mount, Phil. Saeed Humiyun tried to use the butterfly hook to create space, but now he gives up the back. Both hooks in. Mamar Azikov trying to work for a rear naked choke. Saeed Humiyun might have just been rolling on the glove. Close. Oh, it's getting closer. That's underneath it's the over. He's got, there's the top, ladies and gentlemen. Maruf John Mamar Azikov with a huge win. Continues the winning streak. Three fights, three submissions. Ladies and gentlemen, the Uzbek fighter, Maruf John Mamar Azikov. Gets a big win tonight. Uzbekistan is up one and early. Your winner, by rear naked choke, from Uzbekistan, Maruf John Mamar Tape. Both men, relatively young, 23 and 25 respectively. Supremely well-conditioned athletes. Uzbek versus Kyrgyzstan, who's going to take it? Both men look primed, ready to go. Referee having to push them back a little bit. We've got a night here vying for Central Asian supremacy. So far, Uzbekistan is up by two. Central Asian Supremacy. That had a lovely ring to it, just like the gong we heard there to initiate the first round. Boys Nazarov on the outside, implementing little bits of lateral movement. You can see both men are wrestlers from their base, nice and wide. 
Who's going to throw first? Who's going to commit to the strikes first and leave themselves vulnerable to a potential takedown? Very interesting, Phil. They're both fighting from a wrestler's stance. If you're a striker, you put your strong side back. Wrestler, strong side forward. Both of them are from the combat sports perspective. Southpaws. Just trying to find those little enemies. And again, that's a great point, Kerry. Southpaw versus Southpaw. How strange will that be for one another? Because as a Southpaw myself, there's not a lot of his knocking about. It's very, very unusual. I've seen it only a handful of times. Card getting behind both fires almost. Altenbeck stalking, but moving backwards doesn't always mean you're falling to your aggressor. He could be trying to draw his opponent in so he can level change, get in on those hips. He has that rear hand primed and ready to go. It's almost as if he's waiting for Arik Baev to step in and just ping that right down the center line. Your forward movement doesn't necessarily indicate aggression in this sport. What's going on? There it is. And on a single leg, gets it a beautiful reversal. What a sweep. Finds himself landing big shots to the side of the head. These shots are legal. Alton Beck showing phenomenal wrestling on the world champ. As far as I'm concerned, these shots are fine. Alton Beck just trying to, to make his opponent uncomfortable. Needs to be wary of getting his back taken here. Does Boyz Nazarov. So impressive, Phil, to see more of a wrestler ride than the jiu-jitsu based positions that we normally see. Yeah, it's, it is classic wrestling with big strikes. Little warning not to hit the back of the head. And again, like you alluded to at the start of the broadcast, the, the man being hit also has a responsibility here when these shots come in. If he turns his head away before the shots left the chamber and hits the back of the head, it's a perfectly legal shot. That exactly. clipped the ear. That's clipping the ear. That's a perfectly legal shot. It's another way of looking at the issue, Brave Nation, is if the shot that you throw comes somewhere in the back of the head, but it gets a piece of the ear, it is a legal shot. Wrestler is now on his back. Boy Nazarov trying to work in for a Kimura here, trying to get that grip. Beautiful thing about that Kimura grip is it doesn't just threaten a submission, but it also threatens sweeps. But Arik Baia very much wise to it and just establishing his position and side control here. Constant movement from Arik Baev. Again, Boy Nazarov trying to get in on that Kimura grip on the right side of Arik Baev. Trying to use it to sweep here. In this position, Arik Baev can grab his own. Oh! No! He doesn't quite have the leverage to get the submission. But he may use it to sweep. He needs to hook up a leg. A beautiful work to transition into north south. Beautiful work to keep that key lock. He's going to have to try and cut the angle, get his guard back, or at least get half guard back to make this position tenable for him. And he's still holding on to that grip. Extended out, may have been a little tendon damage right there. He is tenacious with it, but Arik Baev able to weather the early storm. A little under 90 seconds to go in our first round here. Wildly partisan, Uzbek crowd trying to lend oh. their fighters some, some strength. Huge left over the top from Boy Nazarov. That's going to earn the respect of Arik Baev. Again, both buyers now just composing themselves a little. Frenetic pace to this opening round. Hook to straight combination from Boy Nazarov. And now he's going to be thinking about the takedown and thinking about the wrestling prowess of Arik Baev. Swing and a miss. Beautiful timing to duck under. But nice heavy hips from Boy Nazarov here. And again, Phil, we're seeing that ankle being held. We're seeing it held twice now. These are wrestling rides. These are not the, the jujitsu based positioning that we ordinarily see here. It's very, very exciting for me to see a little bit of a different flavor on the sport. And that's one of the things that I liken the Brave Combat Federation World Tour to. It's like going to little restaurants in, in different neighborhoods with different cuisines than the one you're used to. That transition there, speaking of cuisine, was absolutely delicious from Arik Baev. Was in the turtle position, has now slowly, incrementally parlayed that. <laughs> round finishes up. Getting to the first round for the very first time. 
Phil, if you were a judging man, and I know you're not, we're here in a completely different capacity. Who did you like in that round? Oh, for, for me, it's a, you have to wonder is it the number of questions are, are, are raised when you, you ask that. Is it the, the submission attempt from Boy Nazarov, or was it the ability to ride out and maintain that positional dominance from Arik Baev? It really depends on the subjectivity of the judges in these positions, Kerry. It does indeed. I actually liked Altenbeck for, uh, for that round. I have him up 10-9 to nine for riding time, landing a number of strikes that weren't wildly significant, but they hurt. They were probably the most significant strikes of the round. That was, for my money, the most beautiful moment in that sport. I thought there was going to be a takedown, ended up being a reversal. Absolutely fantastic wrestling technique on display and this the only only the third fight of the card brave combat federation 59 bukhara uzbekistan corners taking a little time to get out of the ring no nope. very good refereeing here making sure there's no extra water on the fighter brave nation sometimes a coach especially when it's hot here like as it is here coach will pour some water on their fighter to cool him down it is not an attempt to cheat but we do have great referees here. They didn't want any of that extra water to cause anything to be slippery. Second round, here we go. Let's see if they pick up where they left off. Both men now, oh, big shot over the top from Arik Baev. Kotam's been told by his corner to be a little bit more aggressive. I think they th they believe he did not win this first round. They want him to go out there, what they know he can do. Both these men have dynamite in their left hands, as we say. Both have wins by way of KO or TKO. But Nazarov trying to attack the body a little bit. I like the way he's switching up the strikes now. He's landing punches to the body, to the head, landed a decent leg kick there. He's definitely the more active fighter with regards to his movement and volume and frequency of shots in the second round. Kotum's corner has oh. lit a fire under him and it is paying off right now. Nice stiff jab, but he needs to be wary of dipping his head in when he throws that jab. He's coming off the center line with it, but he's right into a check hook potentially from Arik Baev. Nice one, two. Doesn't quite land flush, but gets the attention of Arik Baev. Southpaw versus Southpaw leading itself to a very, very interesting chess matchup. And on a single as Arik Baev runs the pipe beautifully on it, but could potentially get caught in a guillotine here. Oh, Not quite there. Oh, the head looks like it's slowly popping out. Chin is our, it's also stuffed. It's a little bit hard to breathe in that position. Boy Nazarov. Wrist gets a little bit higher. Boy Nazarov's leaning back. He's readjusted beautifully. This is a lot more dangerous. Instead of flat backing, he's now setting up into his opponent. You just wonder how much of a squeeze does Boy Nazarov want to commit to it. He's, now, he's still got a hold of the neck, but he's not there. He's let bails. it go. Well, uh, he did a great job of setting it up. Realized he didn't quite have it. Didn't want to burn those arms out. Be on bottom without the ability to defend himself adequately. And now he's gone back to that figure four potential Kimura grip. Arik Baev just trying to ride it up and work his way up the hips. Potential for a back take here. Finds himself now in that side control position. Again with the Kimura attempt by Nazarov. He needs to get that knee, that left knee tucked right in. Create a shield with it. Abandons it and now finds himself on his back with Arik Baev inside his guard. The guard of Boynazarov is open. Again, will he try and dig in for that Kimura? Yes, there it is. This seems to be a go-to of his. There is so much you can do with that Kimura, with that figure four arm lock. Digging in deep. You can sweep with it, submit with it. You can break an elbow with it. But every time. Harik Baev has remained calm and right now he takes the back, both hooks in. He's a little bit too high for my liking. I'd like to see him get his own hips a little bit further down, but he's landing big shots here. We are starting to see tradi more traditional jiu-jitsu based rides. That would be preparatory in all likelihood to oh. a submission attempt rather than just strikes. Big shots here from Harik Baev. Bonazarov doing a good job to try and get up if you are Arik Baev in this situation, do you grab a leg? Just as I say that, he grabs the leg. In the words of one of my countrymen, I predict these things. 
Trying to stretch him out for that Shari Pov stretch. Momentarily, I thought he was trying to hit a banana split there, but again, the pendulum swings in this fight. Boy, Nazarov with huge grinding points. Fantastic little scramble there. That what you saw, Brave Nation, is what this sport comes down to. Nobody's oh. got a clear, clear advantage. Huge. And whoever goes the hardest reaps the reward. Boy, Nazarov landing absolutely huge shots here. How much is fatigue playing into the part of Arik Baev? Shot after it's shot almost after over, shot. Phil. Ladies and gentlemen, seconds we could be looking at the end. Seconds away. Huge shots. He's it's not over. That set. Ladies and Play out and very much the same way that they had. Some of those grappling you know, These Central Asian fighters don't beat judges. These fighters are not here to wall and stall. They are not here to lay and pray. They are here to finish. Some of those grappling issues would simply squeeze that I know as a purist when it comes to all things grappling here, you can appreciate some of that. Altebeck is now standing big. Stumbling a little bit, he took some clean shots to the head. He is moving down the stairs under his own control. Yeah, the victor goes to the award. Carlos Kramer entering the Brave Combat Federation K, Brave Nation. We are just moments away from the Roaring Lion, making it official. Absolutely. Another incredible battle inside the cage. This one comes to an end at four minutes and eight seconds of the very second round. Your winner by TKO to the strikes from Uzbekistan, Arta This next battle is three five-minute rounds in the super lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of three wins and no losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 74.7 kilograms. Representing Sapsen Jim and fighting out of Kyrgyzstan. Please welcome Niazidin Reese Bajel! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 15 wins, 4 losses, and 1 draw. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 74.46 kilograms. Representing the Sultan team and fighting out of Uzbekistan. Please give it up for Mashrap John Black Jr. Ruzi Bayer. Your referee is Sharipov Izzat. Brave Nation, both of these fighters have a penchant for taking their opponent out early. One of these two is going to drop fast. Hold on to your papakas. Hold on to your hats. It's just about to happen. Huge fight in prospect. Speaking of prospect, 3 and 0 oh versus 15, 4 and 1. What a name Niazidin could make for himself against Masrab John Ruziboyev here. Big shot right down the middle from Ruziboyev. Likes to start early, likes to start aggressive. Swing and a miss. Needs to defend the takedown now. I think you may see this be... Oh, jumps on the guillotine choke. This looks tight, Carrick. This is it, up. it's over. In just 19 seconds of the very first round, Uzbekistan, stand up for your local hero, Masnab John Ruziboyev. Uzbekistan is now 2-0 and oh against Central Asia. First fight, Tajikistan fell. Second fight. Kyrgyzstan fell, Uzbekistan is up to two nothing. That is ninth first run finish in the career. Marks the show in his 19 seconds are getting the strike was a stake on your fence and then absolutely snaps on the neck and the fact that these fighters were trying to so early just added greatness to how Jason was the finish was. Making his way to the cage to give us the official decision. 
And ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, Uzbekistan, what a great finish to our second bout. This comes to an end in 18 seconds of the very first round. Your winner, by guillotine, from Uzbekistan, Mashrup Chong, Black Junior, Hussein.